Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Another trip through a week. My goodness, they go fast. Like in five seconds, I think a week goes by. I don't know, maybe even a year. Hi, Irma. Good morning, Joni. Hi, Lori. Good morning, Anita. How's everyone today? Hi, Colleen. Good morning, Emerson. Hi, Jill. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Susan and Susie. Good morning, Ems. So, how is everyone today? Um, I am going to paint um, a, and just at the last minute here, I, I changed my mind. Let me show you. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Lee. Hi. Okay, let me turn this around. The weeks go by too fast. Yes, they absolutely do. Hi, Michael. So, I'm going to try this today. So, what I did, I'm going to paint um, dandelions. I always wonder why they're weeds, because they really are beautiful. I don't know if it's because their stems are jaggedy. I mean, honestly, they, they look so pretty in a field. Like, why we want to kill them? They're good for the bees. I don't know. I never understand it. Um, when I was a kid, I were, not a kid, but when I was older and looking to buy my first house, I remember telling my dad that I wanted to have those violets growing all in my yard because some houses in downtown Lancaster, beautiful houses, had them growing. I can't get rid of that light in, in the reference, but I need the light because, okay, let's just, okay, there we go. Sorry about that. I always have, have, hi Gabby, I always have technical difficulties. Anyway, long story short, I don't think that these should be called weeds because I think they're so pretty. Um, I was walking through a field of them yesterday and loved it. And yeah, anyway, so I just decided to try this. So I put acrylic paint on here in a bright pink. I used this golden fluid acrylic with a little bit of matte medium just mixed in to kind of make it wet. I've been playing around a lot more with acrylics. So this is just, just my underneath and I would love little bits of this pink to show through. So we'll see what happens. No guarantees, but when you do it, like because I used acrylic, that's completely dry now. There's no, there's no wetness to it. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Mary Eileen. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do my transparent layer the way I usually do. I probably won't be able to see it quite as well, but this is kind of an experiment. <clears throat> Just mixing it up a little bit, which I love to do. Just change things and see what happens. Oh, here, what did you say? Um, Michael said, you know, you can make dandelion syrup with the flowers. I supposedly taste like honey. Oh my gosh, probably. Well, when I was a kid, like one of my dad's favorite things was um, dandelion salad. Have you ever had that, Michael? My stepmother used to always make it. They'd go out by the railroad tracks. When I say that, that's right near where um, all the animals are that I always photograph when I go for walks. And they would go out and by the stream out there, the, a lot of dandelions would grow. And they would pick dandelion and then we would have that for salad at night. And it was always good. I think she made it with like hot bacon dressing and I don't ever make it but I should because I really do like it they sell it at market we saw it at market um on Saturday morning because we were talking about it with somebody and they actually had dandelion yeah they get a bad bad rap they should um not be yes dandelion salad is wonderful yeah why are they weeds I have no idea same with those cute little purple violets that grow naturally in the yard in the spring. They're weeds too. Maybe because they grow in the midst of the grass. I don't know. We should just deem them not weeds anymore because they shouldn't be. Anita said my son made dandelion wine with the flowers. It was very sweet. Oh, really? Hmm. Well, that certainly sounds like fun. I've never tried to make wine. Oh, and speaking of wine, Corinne said so you're using, yep, yes, you can put, you can put acrylics underneath oils. You just can't put oils underneath acrylics. And from what I, what I understand, it's because um, acrylics dry quickly, right? And if you would put um, 
oil paint over acrylics, then that's fine because the acrylics dry quickly. But if you put acrylics over oils, the acrylic would dry first and then the oil paint wouldn't get a chance to dry underneath. So then I think it would crack and stuff. Plus, yeah, I think it's just the drying, the drying time and the product, but you can definitely use acrylics under oils. So I would love some of this um, crazy pink to show through. Um, oh, so anyway, I was going to say, speaking of wine, which reminded me of something, my friend Lori, who makes wine and saves all the bees, and um, Ellen's Irma thought of you this morning, you didn't forget my cinnamon, oh, and your coffee. Um, my friend Lori wrote to me this morning because she was um, looking up the those flowers that I bought, those gorgeous, dusty whatever flowers and she said they were so expensive she said she looked into them further because I saw her last last night Monday night and here she found out that um they're not a natural flower you can only buy them as cut flowers because they are dyed so you know those flowers like that you can buy in New York City on the street corners that look unnaturally bright that's what they do. They put the stems in a dye and the dye goes up the stems and that's what colored those flowers so beautifully. And that's why they looked unnaturally gorgeous. Who knew? Learn something new all the time. So I guess that's been a trend maybe in the last year or two that people do that. Like for weddings, they dye the, get dyed flowers. Isn't that interesting? So, you can't grow those actual flowers that I love because they're dyed. Leave it to Lori to figure that out for me. But they really are pretty. I don't know if there's anything wrong with dyeing flowers, but I'm, my gosh, flowers are so pretty. But I could not photograph those flowers and capture their color. The, the color would just totally change from in my photograph which was wild but it might be because they're dyed I don't know if that could have anything to do with it or not Gabby said have you ever painted with your non-dominant hand oh oh my gosh Gabby that sounds like a, a fun thing to try I mean it wouldn't be fun to have to do it but it would be interesting to see how that would how that would work like would a different piece of your brain's creativity kind of kick into gear I don't know that'd be a fun challenge Ellen said we used to put food coloring in the water to color mums for football games school colors really Ellen I never heard of that that's so cool huh that's a whole new thing to learn I love that idea isn't that fun? That This reminds me of, of like the 70s, doesn't it? Those kind of muted oranges and that bright pink and that kind of olive green. I've been thinking about that because in my inspiring art group today, we're going to mix oranges. And I used to, I used to really dislike the color orange. I don't know why. I think in the 70s, it was very popular. And then like in the 80s and 90s, like I, I don't know if I wouldn't have cared if they just got rid of the color orange and brown. I just didn't like them at all. And now I'm starting to like them again. Yeah, sorry about your arm, Gabby. Corinne said, sorry about your arm. Let us know how your paintings turn out. <laughs> yeah, it would force you to be more loose. I would think so. Be a fun experiment if you didn't need to do it. But yeah, Gabby, you have to let me know how it goes. So I'm just going to put some pigment sticks. Hopes that this pops through in the end. Yeah, I'd love for this. I love the feel of how this looks right now. I keep trying to kind of play more, to spend more time playing, and um, which is hard right now because I'm getting ready for art shows and I'm teaching that class in Connecticut. So I'm getting, you know, supplies and thinking about all of that. And then I have a show the day after I get back. So I pretty much have to leave for that ready for my show when I get back, which is, it doesn't sound that bad, but 
the way my brain works, that's a lot to pre-think about, to think that I'm ready to go. You know, I feel like I'll be away thinking about that the whole time, and I don't want to. I want to have kind of my ducks in a row so that, that when I um, go teach, I don't need to think about it at all. It is fun, isn't it? Yeah, I love how this looks. So yes, getting ready and I made the big leap of, I ordered, which I hadn't done this whole time. I've been, I've only done a few shows. I did a bunch of shows the first year. I might've done a second year and then COVID hit. I didn't do any. And then I just, I borrowed my tent from my mentor, Steven, and I just made the crazy leap and ordered my own tent and my own um, panels, pro panels, which I've never had before. So it's a little bit of a scary commitment. It's like that means I'm committing to doing more than one season of outdoor art shows because they're so hard. It's so much to set them up and, and do all the things. It's like not something that is naturally easy for me. when I do um, go to Philadelphia I'm going to have to set a lot of that up myself because my husband retires the day that show starts so he won't be able to help me set up it's so fun isn't it <clears throat> so yeah sometimes you just have to take a leap of faith and dive in I'm not very good at that I'm very cautious about everything it's a personality trait of mine that I'm not proud of but Okay. Carolyn just said, I just got a tent and got the flourish panel. Oh, the flourish panels. Oh, I don't know what they are. I, uh, or do you mean, what did I get? Pro panels. I got pro panels. You got flourish. Yeah. And I, they, yeah, they take a little while to come too, but it, it's been really nice that my friend Steven let me borrow his for all this time. But sometimes he needs a double tent for shows. Okay, so I really need greens and yellows and some oranges in there. I want to let that pink show through. I'm just kind of thinking to myself. But I do, I love that. I love just the way it looks now. I think that's super fun. Let me pull this over to my, I have nice fresh paint out here today. I love when my paint's fresh. Um, okay. And I had a little bit of time this morning. I was playing around with using phthalo blue, which I don't use very often, but I mixed phthalo blue with um, a radiant lemon and with white just to see what color it looks like. So I need dark, dark greens. Um, almost black. Flourish panels are heavy mesh. You hang your art. Oh, okay. So that is what S Steven had. That's what I'm used to using are the flourish panels. The nice thing about those, um, the flourish panels is, um, like it lets the air through. It's not as hot. I don't think in your tent, like there are good perks to that, but the pro panels, like when I hang smaller pieces on them, they kind of kind of fall in like they don't hang straight Irma says I have to break down panels from pro panels makes it easier to put up and fit in my car yeah so I, that's what I got the ones that, that fold in half or whatever they're half half panels yes that's what I got because I just have a, a minivan <laughs> I told you I I raised three children and never had a minivan and now now I drive around in a minivan it's crazy It is practical to have a minivan, though. You can move a lot of stuff. Like a nice variety of greens. That's, that's a really pretty green. And then I need... Um, what else could I make here? I'm going to use... Um, sap green. And... I think I'll use lemon yellow. to make kind of a brighter green. Irma, do you set up your tent and everything yourself? 
I am just totally not good at doing that. I'm already worried about doing it for the art show. Well, that didn't turn out green, did it? <laughs> Kim, let me see. Let me take most of that out. And... I want to desaturate that a little bit. It's a little too bright. There's a little more lemon yellow in there. And then I can mix some yellows. Yeah, that looks nice. That's a nice light color for the green. said used to until several surgeries oh right your husband does it that's good yes well yeah it is it's it's hard to do that and are your flourish panels or do they go all the way across the 10 feet i think i might take this dark and add just a little bit of purple into it and lighten it just for a little extra color just because we're doing yellows it's fun to have a little pop Purple. Yes, this is oil paint. It's a nice muted purple. We'll see if that works. It's a purpley gray, isn't that pretty? I need some yellows. <clears throat> Pretty, but I need more. I'm sure I'm gonna need more of that. Hermes says I have propanes that fit all around 10 foot tent. Three 10 foot panels. The tent came with solid panels put down in bad weather. Yep. And that is a whole nother world doing outdoor art shows because you do have to worry about weather and all that kind of stuff too. And then setting up in Philadelphia is always tricky because it's city streets and parking and all that. It gets a little wonky also. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of this. I'm thinking of kind of the shadow areas. I'm going to add a little bit of um, ultramarine blue in there. I feel like I need to add some definition within there. Looks like a green. I don't think I need quite enough of that. That'll be okay. It's amazing how far oil paint goes. Okay, I think that's a good, a nice palette for what we're doing here. Let me pull you back up. It's a two-day show. Do you leave your... Yes. I did one show in down, down, down... Where was it? Doylestown, Pennsylvania, where we had to tear it down. It was on a street in a cute little town. But because it was on the main street, we had to tear it down that night and set it up the back next morning. And I never went back to that show because I hate putting my tent up so much. I think that happened in Arlington or Alexandria, Virginia, too. I just... That's too much work. So, like, it for... The Rittenhouse show that I do in Philadelphia, I set the tent up on Thursday night and it stays up till Sunday. And then I'm also doing a show in Rehoboth Beach in August and it's two weekends and you set the tent up, have it up for the, you know, Friday, you have it up Saturday, Sunday for the show. And then you just put your artwork in a building and leave the tent set up until the next weekend. That's an entirely different way of doing it, but... Um, yeah, it's nice not to have to take it down and put it back up again. I'm a little too lazy for that. 
Now I find that painful doing that project. Just looking for my darkest areas here. It's so nice being able to go find painting inspiration everywhere now. Just to go out my door and go for a walk. Although I have to tell you, I spend a lot more time taking photos than I do walking now, which is not good. Not good for the exercise, you know. It's like I'll go and plan to, you know, walk five miles or whatever. But I stop all the time to take photos. Also fills my phone up quickly. <clears throat> good morning, Sharon. So I just kind of dance around the canvas and put, you know, color in all over so it kind of comes together at once so I can see it's how it's evolving. Thanks, Ellen. Ellen says, love the colors you're using there fun, aren't they? Adding that kind of pink underneath there was a, f a fun last minute idea. If it turns out well, I'll have to play with it again. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't hate the messy middle of this painting. <clears throat> I shouldn't be superstitious and think I shouldn't have said that and then something will go wrong, but it won't. <clears throat> I don't think so. Some paintings just kind of are easier than others. I actually did, was starting one yesterday. <clears throat> I wanted to paint at Rehoboth, where I used to always go to the beach as a kid. They have a a game where they, they um, the horses go along, like you throw the little ball into the hole, like schemo or whatever it's called and it's such a cute game it's old and very charming and I wanted to paint that and I painted it in the past and enjoyed it but I just kept not feeling like doing it and then finally like yesterday or the day before I started it and I was like nope I don't feel like painting this I'm not doing it and so I wiped the whole thing off and I'm just not going to I just was not feeling it. It's funny. You have to listen to your intuition, especially when you're doing something creative and do what makes you happy. <clears throat> Instead of, you know, trying to do things that don't feel fun. It's a hard thing to relearn. Like we're, I feel like I've been taught kind of all my life to do things, power through things, get it done. You know what I mean? But trying to do more things that I enjoy. Oh, with the, the, of the horse race? Oh, I know. I love the horse race. Yeah, now you're going to make me want to paint it again. <laughs> it was too complicated. Like, I've been trying to loosen my style and starting to paint that horse race thing. It, it was totally taking my brain in the other direction of being loose. Like, I was starting to get lost in where, all the details of it. If that makes any sense. I think that might have been part of my angst with it. Go for the joy. <laughs> yes, go for the joy. Why is that challenging, you know? That's crazy. I could, yeah, right. I could set up and paint it at my booth, maybe. I don't know if I'm allowed to do that. Um, someone was talking about with oils, the fat over lean method when doing layers. I get confused when they talk about this. Is this considered two layers that you're doing? Oh, no. Um, <clears throat> from what I understand, like I never like saying that I know everything. I don't, like I, I'm always learning new things. But the fat over lean means that when you're doing a painting, like if I'm working on a large painting, I'll do a whole layer and you keep it thin. You use like more, not necessarily transparent, but you don't put any like impasto marks. You don't put, use your palette knife and put 
thick paint down. And that's the same, did you hear me in the beginning when I was talking about, you can use acrylics underneath here and then paint oil over top because the acrylic dries and the oil paint on top has time to dry. But if you put oil on first and acrylics on top, it won't dry. So if you're painting and, and I can do whatever I want because I'm gonna paint this, <coughs> excuse me, I'm gonna paint this <coughs> all in one setting. So that doesn't matter. I can do anything because the paint will all dry at the same time. But if I painted this and I was gonna put this away, and that's what I do when I paint large. If I was gonna put this away and come back to it two weeks later, I don't want any big thick marks here because if I paint a thinner layer over top, then those thick marks started to dry on the top and they're wet underneath and it won't get let them breathe to, to dry correctly. So it's about the drying. Does that make more sense? So instead of thinking fat over lean, think thick, thick over thin, because you have thick paint underneath and paint thin paint on top after it starts to dry, it, it will keep it from drying through and through. Does that make sense? <clears throat> it's about giving, letting your paint be able to breathe and dry correctly. So like in this case, I can put in those, like I can put let thick paint lay on there and it, it will dry fine. Good, I'm glad that helped. Yeah, I found that very challenging too. So I don't really quite think, I mean, I do understand the fat over lean, but in the beginning, you know, those are confusing terms. And I believe it's drying time. I think that's why. Pretty sure. I don't know, I like how kind of spontaneous that is. <clears throat> thick over thin, yep, thick over thin. All right, maybe I'll do a little bit of my, I think I need to start with my lighter, lighter yellow. <clears throat> I usually do my darker colors first, but in this case, because I have to put the colors over top, I'm gonna start with this. And see some of those strokes are thick paint, but that's fine. They can be like that. I love the thick paint. I don't, any mediums? Nope, I don't have any medium right now. I just only in my base layer. Kind of gets the underneath wet for me. Um, I forget what I was saying. Do I so often do? <laughs> Um, no idea. I don't know. I guess it wasn't important. I lost my thought. Allie says, I finally went big, 20 over 20 by 20. Big for me. It's lots of fun. Oh my gosh. Yes. Did you do it all in one sitting or did you, um, do it over a few days? Perfect, and yeah, it's my nice big brush. It forces me to just put them down and not fuss with them. And I'm trying to keep it very loose so that pink underneath there shows through. I had a schedule today. This is a few days. It's it's a lot. I need bigger brushes. I mean, too. I was thinking about that in the middle of the night again. Bigger brushes because I love this brush. I thought maybe I could find a way to hook two together, <laughs> like like that, so that I could make it wider. <clears throat> Flowers for mom. I love that. Love all our mamas being a mama. 
and my daughter, my daughter just turned, my older daughter just turned um, 27 yesterday, and my son turned 30. Oh my goodness, how'd that happen? On, um, on the 20th. And then my daughter Isabel's 19, but so fun. But it is cool having adult kids. Very fun having adult kids. <clears throat> no, I should do that, Michael. I did think about that. Yeah, that, you know, I don't sleep at night. I wake up in the middle of the night thinking about stupid things like how to make my paintbrushes bigger. But I should ask her, like, why? I don't know how they make paintbrushes, but that's all I would really like is this exact brush, like, wider. Just twice as wide or three times as wide would be really fun. <clears throat> to Rosemary Company, they would make a large brush. But <clears throat> oh, I don't know if I listened to that, Michael. What podcast was that? I forget. But, yeah, adult kids are really fun. Dandelions. Little ones used to bring me, oh, when they were little, 40 odd years ago. Yes, bringing dandelions to your mama. That's so fun. Yeah, because little kids really appreciate dandelions. They're beauty. After listening, she really wants to help artists. Okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to write to them, hopefully today. I would just love that. And I think a lot of people would. Like that would be a great product for her to add. <clears throat> okay. I am going to write to her when I'm finished here. Thank you for that suggestion. As it was keeping me up last night. Oh, thanks, Michael. <clears throat> Yeah, I probably wrote it down. I always write down all the notes and then I, I forget to do things. I don't keep up with all the things I want to listen to and do. You all know how that is. There's endless amounts of fun, creative things to do. It's hard to keep up. All right, now I can get a little darker in the center there. <clears throat> the Kim brush. Yeah, that, that's what we all need, the Kim brush. I would love that. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, I hope that would be so. That would make me so happy because I just can't paint the same way large because I just don't have the brush to be able to do like the big strokes. And, you know, I certainly invest in a lot of brushes to try and make it happen, but they're just not the same. Good, I'll tell her. I already know people will buy it. Please try to make it. background <clears throat> Shropshire England in England that's did I say that correctly <clears throat> yeah all the art supply junkies that I certainly am an art supply junkie too oh my goodness I was buying supplies for doing my um art show in Connecticut oh my gosh that got a little crazy I mean, you have to think so far ahead now, buying supplies. I have to really think about how I want my centers to look. <clears throat> um, I need to mix up a little bit more yellow. For that middle... This kind of center, my center looks a little splotchy or something. 
Not that I don't like it, but I need something. Gosh, I hear the wind blowing outside. The sun's out, but it sounds like fall out there. I think it's chilly. I'm not sure. I feel like my centers need a little something sexy going on. I'm not sure what, though. Maybe I ought to do a little bit of pink. Thanks, Sheila. I'm going to just make a little bit more of a pink. Let's see if that... them up a little bit. That doesn't even read pink. I think I might be overworking it. I think I might need to stop, even though we're way ahead of schedule here. Um, let me look around at the, the greens. How do you keep from covering up the transparent pink with the yellow? I always seem to cover up the strokes and color that I just put down. I'm just trying not to. Like I'm kind of paying attention to where colors are. And now I'm thinking about where pinks are showing up. Oh, I have this cute little thing right there I'm going to add. So I'm just kind of intentionally trying to think about letting the pink show through. It's snowing in Ottawa. Here to see James Taylor concert. Oh, that'll be fun. Corinne said, headed to Wisconsin today to visit my oldest adult kid. Adult kids move away sometimes. Well, I always say when when something like, you know, when your kids live far away, the nice thing is that when you do go visit them, you get to land and be with them for a while, like for a few days, like have sleepovers. Like, I love that too. That being together for a few days at a time. Although I guess I would prefer the day in and day out down the street kind of thing, but... Yeah, we parents don't always get to keep that. Thank you, Sarah. Are there some? I'm kind of covering up bits of the where the the pink might be. No, I think it's good. I like all that. I don't think I put any of the lightest green in here. Oh, maybe I did. That does match. Love how flowy the kind of grass looks up there. Oh, I know what I was doing. This little flower here. Quickly, I forget what I'm doing. Or we, I'm sure that they are. Uh, that's got to be fun to go visit Michael. <laughs> I would like that too. Now you get to go hang out in his cool little art studio and paint. And so we're, I'll be in Pittsburgh next week. We're picking Izzy up from college. Bringing her home for the summer. I'm excited for her to be home. Okay, I think I'm finished because I'm just kind of dancing around here. Not... Mm, doing anything that's necessary, that's necessarily helping the painting. I'm going to sign it. <clears throat> the yellow is showing up well due to the pink underneath. How can you bring out the shapes in the green leaves? I don't know. Well, I could get more detailed with the green leaves and, you know, be a little bit more intentional with hard edges and stuff in there, but I want... If I would make those green leaves be more dominant, more hard-edged, and look more like the leaves, then these would not pop as much. So it's like I try to, you want your focal point or the place where you want to look to be sharper, to have um, more value changes, hard edges, 
and color differentiation and then because I want my background to not be too important so that it um, recedes I guess is the word I'm looking for does that make sense all right so I'll pull the tape off I love seeing the tape off Although the rough edge is fun too, but whoops, <laughs> stuck in my paints. All right, let me throw that away. Show it to you close. Oh. So you can see the bits of pink that it's pink colors that really pops through. That was a fun. A fun way to do it in it like I, that was my intention like I thought that's kind of a, a boring image but doing that pink underneath really gave it some personality so there are my my palette very simple palette and let me turn this around so I will as usual I'll save this and I'll put it both on um, my YouTube channel, as well as there'll be a link on my website and my blog. Um, and be sure if you want to go watch, I have a lot, a lot of all of my videos up on YouTube that I do on Wednesday mornings. Thanks for coming and hanging out with me today. It was fun. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And if, if you're in my inspiring art group, we're going to explore art mixing oranges today at 11, I think, 11 Eastern time. And at two o'clock, if you're in my art and bloom course, we're going to work on desaturating colors I think so very fun oh this is I think oh I don't know not 30 maybe 30 by 40 I have it ready to go but like I haven't had that piece of time to dive back into it so thanks for coming guys I'll talk to you soon have a great day bye